You're watching the Small Business Showcase, brought to you by Sassfin and Suits and Sneakers. Hello everyone, Mark Sham here again, and welcome back to another edition of the Small Business Showcase. So today, we are featuring a small business called The Green School. And I have to tell you, this is a business after my own heart because I am thoroughly obsessed with fixing education in South Africa. Now imagine being a parent and being unhappy with the status quo and literally deciding that you are going to do something about it directly. This is where The Green School comes into play. I just love their approach to education, their thinking and everything in between. So please, Enjoy this next episode of the Small Business Showcase with the Green School. Ladies, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Mark. I don't know many people who equally get so frustrated with a system that <laughs> they, they actually literally go on to start their own school. So yes. welcome to a show where Thank we get to talk all about yes. a school that you built. I like to always start the show by asking a simple question, and I'm going to allow either of you to kick off. Yeah. The question is very simple, but not that easy to answer. For the people who don't know who Megan and Nicole are, who the hell are you and what is the value that you add to the world? I think we could say we are education purists. Um, we feel very strongly about education and how it should be, especially for future generations and you know, the world that we're currently living in. Yeah. That's something we feel very passionate about. People either love us or hate us because we, we call people out, we call um, you know, education out and we, yeah. we want the best for children. Yeah. And we are the co-owners of the Green School. You want to just introduce yourselves yes. to the audience? Yeah. Um, I'm Megan. And, and I'm Nicole. Yeah. And yeah, we started the Green School about seven years yeah. ago now. Yeah. And our main goal was to improve education in South Africa. So that's our goal. We are trying to reach as many kids as we can. And we want to uplift the education mm -hmm. system because we have seen in South Africa an education system in crisis. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 mean, I literally couldn't yeah. agree with you. I know, and uh, we've, we've done training around the world and what we're trying to do is just bring all those best practices um, in education and offer it to South African kids. They don't have access to the... The standards of international education. Yeah. So if you go overseas and you, you're looking at best practices in Finland, in America okay. even, the, the standards and benchmarks, um, New, Zealand. New Zealand, you know, when we look at that and what children get, have access to in those countries and you come back to South Africa, it's, it's very disheartening. Yeah. And that's, that's what our school is built on in terms yeah. of giving South African children access to those international best practices in education. Yeah. You know, educating them for the bigger world, not just... South Africa, we're not even educating for South Africa with the current yeah. system. Yeah, I mean, and again, I, I get so thrilled and excited to talk about this topic, as you ladies know, but I want to go back a step before we actually talk about uh, what makes you guys unique. Yeah. yeah. I want to isolate the catalyst because I think being frustrated about yeah. where education is, yeah. is one thing. Yes. It's another to literally decide, you know what, yeah. to hell with that, we're going to start a school. <laughs> Please yeah. take me back to this point in time where it moves from we're frustrated yeah. to we're going to do this. Yeah, I think you started that next because you started it. Yeah, um, I was working in the international schooling environment for a few years. And once I left that after I'd had my kids, I started realizing that that's the only school I'd ever worked in was the international schooling environment. And I realized South African kids don't have access to these schools. You know, these schools are half a million rand a year. and this is not a schooling system that is even closely repli replicated in South Africa. The approach is so different that it shocks parents. We are actually considered alternative because our approach is so different. And I couldn't believe that our kids weren't getting that and from our own children too. I wanted to, I didn't want them to go through the same schooling system I did. And so we started, Megan joined me after a couple of years yeah. and we kept up to date with our international training and we just slowly started building and finding the recipe for this little school that still had the South African flavor, that still had the best of South Africa, but was able to bring in, what, what is the best, like we were saying, what are the best minds in the world saying about education right now? What, are the be what is the best research? What is the latest research on how to teach reading? What's the science behind the writing process and how little kids grasp that? How do, we, how do we teach kids to generate their own ideas and problem solve from kindergarten? And, and that what, that's what was being discussed in this international market and I wanted our kids to have access to that. Yeah, and, and again, I think it's 
hugely vital that we have certain people in the country that actually take a stand. Because yeah. I think that's what you ladies yeah. landed yeah. up doing. Yeah. And it's a rarity. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've been so frustrated for so long yeah. in my own capacity. And I don't want to spend your yeah. precious time talking about that. Yeah. But why I'm bringing it up is that, you know, I've been talking about it ad nauseum for the longest mm-hmm. time because yeah. Yeah. I know one is an entrepreneur, uh, two is just an adult. If I look at uh, the world that we live in today and the things that we need to know, the skills that we need to acquire, yeah. Yeah. the mental yes. and emotional tools that we need to acquire, yeah. Yeah. all of these things that have helped me so deeply in my life and when I look at other successful people, I don't see it being taught in the school. So there's yes. this disconnect between yes. what you go to school for and what the point of schooling really is. And I think we've forgotten about that. It's almost like it's become so the norm that school just is what it is and that we marginally iterate this outdated system. So the fact that that you guys get to a point where you're like, you know what, to hell with it, we'll just do it. But let's go to the specifics now. Tell me a little bit about the green school. Because I mean, this is exactly what the showcase was built for. It's to shine a spotlight on the types of crazy things that people like you two ladies are doing. Can you give me some specifics? I think to start off, sorry Meg, I think we have to, like you're saying, define what is education. And what are we trying to do here? What is the definition of education? And there's a really great um, philosopher and one of the great thinkers out right now, his name's Stephen Hicks. And he kind of looks at education across the whole animal kingdom, but then he looks at human beings and he says, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to impart the skills and knowledge um, to our youth that they require to be successful and... um, Contributing meaningfully to society. Yeah, contributing citizens in society. So if we look at our 12 years of schooling, are our kids coming out successful, contributing members of society, because that's what our job as Educators. adults is to do with our youth. Yeah. And so that, if we keep that in mind around what education is, I think it really helps us define what we're trying to do. Yeah, but then it shows you how bogus the system is. Yeah, exactly. Right now. And I do get it. I know why people don't like to be called out on this, because it's horrible. And I think it's a horrible feeling to know that you're part of a system that's not actually yeah. being highly effective. Yeah. To add to that, I actually feel for most schools and even teachers, because yes. I think well, that the they are doing their best. Yeah, yeah. What you have is an outdated government system and thinking, yeah. and the world is just pointing fingers at everybody else going, this is how we've done it forever, so we should keep doing exactly. it. But when you're 18 years old and you graduate from high school, you're not coming out the best version of yours. Now, no. it's almost like, put all of that away, now we're gonna teach you. Exactly. So exactly. I'm almost like wondering, what's the point? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, for the green school, we want the best version of each child. Yeah. Our whole philosophy is based on children are so capable. Yes. I mean, we put these glass ceilings, these grade yes. levels, these South African standards and benchmarks, we glass, we box them in. Yeah. And children are way more capable if you believe in them, like their parents, their teachers, the school. Yeah. You know, they are super capable and we want the best version of them yeah. themselves to come out. Yeah. We want our kids to come out of school knowing their passions and interests, yeah. knowing their strengths and, and having the skills to follow those passions and interests. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution, moving forward, if you have a passion and interest in something, you're going to find a way. Mm-hmm. you know and we see it every day we get these 18 year olds um, you know meet them and they don't know what they want to do yeah. they can't even tell you what they like to do um, and from a very young age we instill in our children that they've got great ideas yeah. they can generate their own ideas yeah. I mean children are so creative their brains are super creative and the things that they come up with need to be celebrated not squashed yes. so our school is very much yeah. about that so um, there's a bit yeah. of a recipe yeah there. so, there's a recipe. so you've got this philosophy around kids are amazing the yes. teachers build this culture that they, the kids feel like their teachers feel like they're amazing yeah. and they put no limits on them the yeah. parents we then instill this feeling at home that your kids are incredible and the kids come to school feeling like they're amazing yeah. wow. then we take that because that's not enough it's not enough to just have that. You have to have a teacher mm-hmm. that's skilled enough to meet that child's needs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have to have a highly skilled teacher that can come into the classroom and can differentiate that instruction and can walk in like an assessor. They're going in and they're assessing where is that child at right now. They're going into the classroom every day like researchers. Where are we, you know, how do I meet this child's needs? Yeah. So, and they're also going in to give them explicit feedback on a regular basis. So they can go up to any child in their class and say, this is where you're at, this is where you need to be at the end of the year, and this is our next step. Yeah. That kind of feedback is critical to Absolutely. growth. Yeah. And then there's a third component, and it's a curriculum 
that is skill-based and relevant and and child-centered. So the kids can take all their own passions and interests and they can insert it into that daily curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about one subject. I'm talking about every aspect of the day. Reading, writing, maths, phonics, every part of the day needs to be the child's content. Not not anyone else, not the teachers, not the children are inserting. So if they're passionate about horses, they can read about horses, they can write about horses, their maths projects can be around horses, Mm. their phonics can be around horses. You know, that's where it's coming from. In a sense, it's taking a leaf out of the Finnish system, if I remember correctly, right? Because they've, the way I best understand is that they've almost done away with subjects to a degree. Yes. And they teach you a whole bunch of these subjects almost simultaneously. So like you could teach... Uh, engineering, maths, marketing, sales, yeah, whatever, yeah. by teaching people how to build a bicycle and sell it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. right? So I think the thing is with our kids, they come to produce. We're yes. not there to impart knowledge on them. I mean, in today's world, the knowledge or content's out there. You know, we need to teach them what to do with that. Can they apply that to their real lives? Can they read to comprehend it, and make sure it's fake, uh, real, not fake? Yeah. Um, what can they do with that information out there? So we don't need to teach any content. We don't need to impart that and shove it down their throats yes. all the time. They need to come to school and produce what they've got. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I think that's, that yeah. They don't, our kids come to school, they don't expect to be filling in worksheets. Yeah. They know that they're coming with a blank piece of paper in front of them. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and that gives them this blank canvas to yeah, kind of we, open up. And that's not just, we're not just throwing them in the deep end either. We're not just throwing off the cliff and say, right. Yeah, when we talk about a literacy curriculum, um, if I dive into a grade two writing unit right now, yeah. narrative writing, we also teach genres, not subjects. If we teach a narrative writing unit, I'm alongside those kids writing every single day. I'm modeling the writing process. And then I'm also using the best authors in the world who are on our bookshelves mm. to show us what good writers do. So I might have a copy of Our Moon by Jane Yolen right next to me and saying, let's study what Jane Yolen does in this personal narrative. And I'm going to do it in my personal narrative. So I'm writing my own small moment. And that small moment could be, and it's personal, you're connecting with these kids. It's about the first time I held my little boy. And I'm sharing with them. And we're using, you know, we're using setting details and we're using um, dialogue dialogue, and we're using description. And I'm modeling. And now I'm going to say to them, you guys go off and you come up with your own small moment. Wow. Yeah. And, you, and you're giving them an opportunity to find it, connect, yes. and then say, now you've seen what I've done. Yeah. I've modeled explicitly to you, let's give it a try. Yeah, it's like balanced structure. Yes. Okay, so let's get into some specifics, right? The green school, how many kids do you have? 52. 52 at the moment. Okay, 52. how many teachers? We have six of us. Six of us, yeah. And two assistants. Okay, awesome. Yeah. What grades do you teach from and until? So currently we've got from preschool, which is our triple noughts, and we're up to grade eight now. We've opened a grade eight this year. Oh, wow. And we're planning on next year rolling up into high school, which is our nine to twelves. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that would be quite a leap for you guys. It is, but, um, you know, like COVID, COVID taught us so much about online learning. Um, we jumped into yeah. it and we learned so much and how we can re- meet each child's needs yeah, and work at their, their level, extend yes. them where they need extension. It was, yeah. it was so streamlined for us um, that we, you know, we, we did our research yes. and we partnered with international schools online. And that's allowed us now to jump in and get the best international teachers, teachers. to work online yeah. with our middle school students and our high school students. So it's allowed us to expand. Wow. Where about are you guys based? Charcoal North, Johannesburg, on a, on a lovely farm. Yeah, wow. And that. how long have you been there for from the beginning? No, we've been there about five years now. Yeah. We started off, you know, in a garage, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we started off in a garage. All good small businesses. And then, and then we... Um, we had some investors come yeah. in and we were able to build up a little school on our farm at the moment. And so where to from here for you ladies? I know you've obviously alluded to the idea of opening up to high schools. Mm-hmm. How would you, if you could wave a magic wand, what numbers would you like to get to maybe next year or the year after? Or what is your general vision for the growth of your school? I think we, we've decided to grow very organically in yeah. some sense because we still, we don't want to lose that essence. We don't want to become a corporate Yes. business you know we're very much about personalized education yeah you know um and we don't want to grow big and also you know with the teachers that we've got they they're highly skilled teachers and it's hard to find that in south africa well that's the biggest yeah. problem is that we've never been able to grow bigger than we can train teachers or yeah. or teachers. find um internationally trained teachers it's an, a school is not just its curriculum yeah. a school is not its facilities the key to especially a primary school is how skilled the teacher is. Yeah. You, that is it. And our teachers are not coming out of university with any of the skills they need to teach reading and writing. Yeah. And when we say that, it's a crisis. No, it is. They are not coming out of university 
knowing the reading process, the writing process, the science behind how to assess kids on an individual basis. To and differentiate instruction. To they differentiate and then meet each kid. That's why we're finding these kids who you know, are just slipping through or feeling so frustrated or feeling so anxious because mm. the teachers have no idea where they're at. And that's what we're feeling really anxious about, like you, around this schooling system, is that we're seeing this on a regular basis. Yeah. These kids, we're assessing these kids, we're working with these kids, yeah. and nobody's ever had any idea where they're at. Yeah, and I mean, if, if all of us just cast our own minds back, it's not that long ago yeah, that no. you're sitting in the schooling system, and it's a deeply frustrating process. Mm, yeah. And you look at it to this day, you know, and I couldn't agree with you more when you talk about the skills that teachers require yeah. and yet don't have. Because in a strange way, as someone who teaches adults, yeah. I can see it is that yeah. not all speakers are created even and not all teachers yes. are created even. So there's no question in my mind um, that that's true. I, I see it in my own right. And then whenever you've seen a youngster who's truly enjoying, or anybody for that matter, even an adult, who's truly enjoying whatever they're learning, it is by far yes. the most exciting, it is. It is. epic yes. journey. Exactly. So even that is a disconnect for me. Like, yeah. how is it that learning in its natural organic way is such an amazing process and an amazing thing to do and yet when it comes to like the best time of your life where you literally don't have to do anything other than focus on learning yeah. you almost have a continuous sense yeah. of angst well, exactly. being in school our teacher training comes from a place of control not connection yes so we go into the classroom to connect with yeah. our kids and collaborate with them collaborate and teachers almost need a little bit of faith and their kids, yeah. that they've given a little bit of time and space to show you what they know. Yeah. And that approach, happiness is a byproduct of it. Yeah. It's not something you can, head, you can kind of seek head on. Yeah. Happiness is what happens to kids when they're being met at their just right level, when they're being challenged on a daily basis, when they're discovering their passions and interests, when they're transferring what they know, what their personal experiences, their, their loves, yeah. you know, into their learning. You get happy. You get happy. Yes. It's just what happens. Yeah. We have a good example yeah. that we do something called Genius Hour. So every week, we the kids get an hour a week, and we're actually extending that now because <laughs> they love it so much, um, where they take the skills, because the, the curriculum that we um, use, is, well, standards and benchmarks, is very skill-based. It doesn't yeah. teach them any content. They take the skills that we've taught them, and they apply it to their own passion project. Mm -hmm. So, And it's amazing. When you see these kids, I mean, generally, our kids, our kids are all very happy children. Yeah. I'm not just saying that they really are, and that's our aim to you know, make sure that they've got the skills to follow their own passions and interests. We've got kids that have created websites, have, they've got app, app ideas, like incredible ideas. Yeah. Um, they are you know, starting a charity, charity organizations for yeah. dogs and animals because they absolutely love dogs mm -hmm. and they're selling that at school. So, you know, when you see kids when they can't stop working, yes. like that, you know, they're in that flow yes. and they're yeah. passionate about it and they want to go mm -hmm. home and carry it on at home. You know, when I'm getting videos of kids building the skeleton of, you know, one child wants to be a vet, so he's busy building a skeleton out of clay of a dog so he can figure that out. Like, you know, that's what we want for kids. And, you know, that, that creates yeah. happy kids and they're confident in their abilities. Yeah, and they're just you know? igniting that. Oh, because yeah, I say this, so like, one yes. of the things is, you know, I, I say to some people, like, I'm quite a crossover in a way, like, I'm part nerd and part, like, commercial. <laughs> I'm an extrovert and I'm out there and yes. I'm, like, leading a charge in some instances and yet I'm a total nerd because I sit and when I'm in a space of learning and I learn yeah. largely by doing and when yeah. I'm in that zone, I feel, to your point, in this total flow state. Yeah. And yeah. Why I'm bringing that up is only because surely that should be the wish for every kid and every adult that they feel that not like, oh, I have to do this now. Yeah. Exactly. But they, they're so excited. Exactly. Okay, for time's sake, I want to just peel it back. Yeah. Um, is there anything that I've missed that people need to know? That is your close-up <laughs> camera over there, ladies. So please tell the audience who's watching right now, what is it that they need to know about you as the school that maybe we've missed? Mm -hmm. And also, what is your call to action and how can people get hold of you? I think kids, um, I mean, they love learning. Kids yeah. love to learn. And when they're in their right space and you know, they're, in, they're in flow, they learn naturally. And it's something that we're so passionate about yeah. that we've seen it over and over again that when kids are given the space and the time, it's... It's magic. Yeah. I think um, as a school, I think we... You know, we're continuously learning, relearning um, about what works for children. And we do that with every single child. And I think every child deserves a personalized learning, you know, plan or journey because as adults, it's the same for us. 
And yeah, I think every child deserves to know or celebrate their passions, their interests, their strengths. Yes. And that's what we do. And we want to continue doing that. We want to continue doing that on a larger scale eventually. Um, and as parents of kids yeah. in school, expect more. Yeah, expect, expect more. Expect more, ask more questions. Find out where your kids are at. Yeah. You know, make sure that you, you're right in there and you're expecting more from these schools that can deliver mm. you know, with a little bit of, with, of help. And yeah. I think our parents are just as part of the learning process. And if they expect more from their kids and from their, from their schools, we'll, yeah. we'll always, improve the education system together. We will. I think always asking why. why. Yeah. Ladies, how do people who are watching get hold of you? Uh, yeah. uh, we have our a website, website um, which is thegreenschool.co.za. And hello at thegreenschool.ca is our way to contact us. I just want to take this opportunity to give a big love to Sasfin for helping us put the Small Business Showcase together. Literally, without them, none of this would be possible. So here's what I'd like from you. Number one, please support these small businesses. A really easy way to do this is just to like and share this video so that more people can see this. And if you have a small business that you'd like to nominate because you've dealt with them and you love it, please let us know. Get in touch. Chat to you soon.